I'm doing all this work, like, is it really worth it? And um, God's been so faithful to open doors over and over again, where it's like, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Look, I'm showing you again, this is where you're supposed to be. Um, and that's something that I feel like if you see all these doors opening, it's like, okay, yeah, you're supposed to be here. What's up, buddy? It's your boy, Stephen Blake. Welcome back to the podcast, episode seven of The Found Show. We are here with my good friend, Raymond, AKA Ray Ray. Before I begin, shout out to Courtney from Reverend All Designs. Got this sick march for rep in here. So I might have a little goodie for you later. So okay. stay tuned for that. But without further ado, Raymond, tell us all about who you are, your story, background, floor is yours. Yeah, um, so my name is Raymond Sanchez. I'm a producer and audio engineer based in Gilbert, Arizona. Um, I am 19 years old, so I'm pretty young. Probably, I would say, I think I'm the youngest on your podcast so far right now, which is pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, I have a huge passion for music, specifically worship music. And um, yeah, just on fire for the Lord through, through, through music, so. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about your background of how you even got into this you know, kind of scene, because I'm sure when you were a kid, you had some hopes and dreams and aspirations of being ABC, XYZ. Kind of tell me a little bit about that story. Yeah. So originally when I was younger, I started um, I started singing at a really young age. I think I was four years old when I did my first like singing up on a stage. And it was a singing a Go Fish song from like 2000, the early 2000s. It was like a mom song. We did it for Mother's Day. So um that was kind of like my first moment of like oh i kind of like this um started learning piano when i was seven um so classically trained in on the keys uh played classical pieces jazz pieces you name it played in front of judges um and i liked that for a while but then as i started getting more involved in church i realized wow worship music is pretty cool and i don't have to be constrained to reading off of a page of like you know i have to play this note here at this time and whatnot i can kind of use my creative expression um, and my feelings in, in music. Um, when I was in high school or junior high and high school, I played baseball and that was kind of the main thing in my life. I really thought I was going to become a professional you know, ball player. And that's what I wanted actually for the longest time. Um, and as I got through high school and whatnot, I played at a, competed at a really high level, um, played varsity and travel ball. Uh, went out of state for tournaments um, and whatnot, but as I got closer and closer to my senior year of high school, I could feel kind of like this isn't where I'm supposed to be. And that kind of crushed me. Um, the more I came to that realization, the more I realized, okay, where am I, where am I being called to? Like, cause now I was like, I have no idea. My whole life and purpose was to play baseball originally. Um, and so senior year of high school, then started praying about it and I started attending the church I did now. And the first thing that first week I'm there, um, the worship leader comes up to me and he says, you know, Hey, we have this great MD, um, and he can mentor you and, and in the, you know, art of worship and, um, the practical side of things. And I was like, I've no one's ever done that for me before. Um, and then a couple weeks later, I found out about GCU's worship arts program. And I was like, this is exactly what I want to do. So it's like all these doors were like slowly becoming open and it's just kind of proof that, you know, when when God has a calling for your life, like he's going to make it happen with whatever steps he needs to take to make that happen. So as I saw all these doors start opening, I was like, OK, this is where I'm supposed to be. And then all of a sudden I had this increased passion for music and I was like in the studio working on music like at dang near every day. <laughs> so, um, yeah, ever since then, it's just been it's been all music. So. And I love it. Wow, that's incredible. We'll talk about, I know there's something called the flow, right? When you're kind of in that next level zone, yeah. when you're doing your passion, your art, and your craft. Talk about what that's like for someone who may not even know or experience kind of the flow when you're doing your thing with your music. Yeah, so first and foremost, the flow uh, includes the weirdest of faces. So when you're in the flow, you're like locked and in the zone. So like there'll be times where I'm sitting here making music and I'm like this, like I'm like dead staring like into, into nothing. I'm just like locked in. Um, but kind of the flow is like when you're when all of these creative um, inspirations are flowing through you and you keep going like and adding new things to a song like practically that looks like, OK, I'm adding drums. Oh, I hear the melody next. 
So I'm going to start writing the melody. Um, producing music is a lot like writing a book where it's like, you know, you're thinking of the next few lines. Um, I think it's along the same lines as like, you know, you're okay. You're writing this line. Okay. The next line here. Oh, this is a great sentence. Um, so producing music is along those lines where it's like, okay, I'm going to, you know, add the drum, drum pattern here. Okay, cool. I, I think I hear like a little symbol going like that. And it's every little minute detail that no one really hears or can pick out, but it just creates a full track. So the flow is really just creative inspirations back to back that creates, you know, a full song over time. That's awesome. And tell me about a little bit more, you know, kind of going on that flow aspect of, you know, the creative roadblocks you face sometimes, right? The, I mean, like, I already see your face, right? Tell me about those. <laughs> um, yeah, we call it um, beat block is what we call it. So there's like writer's block. It's the, the exact same thing. Um, it is so real. And I know any producer, artist, songwriter, anybody comes and faces this and it is the single-handedly the worst experience in the music industry um practically what beat block looks like is when you're just sitting there trying to come up with something creative trying to come up with something original and it's either something that's already clearly something that's out or it's just not good <laughs> and you're like dang it man i can't come up with anything um so there have been periods where I've stopped making music for like a month to two months because it's like every single time I sit down to produce something, it's garbage in, in my opinion. And music is subjective in the fact that, you know, it's really in the ears of the beholder <laughs> per se. Um, but yeah, beat block is probably the most detrimental thing to any artist or producer. I can relate, you know, being in the creative space, sometimes you're working on a piece and you're like, my brain's not working. I'm just not there. What's going on? Right. Yeah. That's awesome. So a little bit more about that kind of that train of thought in terms of maybe how your faith is intertwined in that. Right. Because I'm sure at some point you're like, OK, I can either do, you know, worldly secular music like everybody else, or I can choose the worship route, which I'm sure you've experienced maybe is a little more niche or if I'm not mistaken. But tell me about that. Yeah. So um, I think. Like, when I first got into music, I was really tempted to go more on the secular uh, route of music. Um, the way I approach music now is that I like to produce music that's not cons constrained to what contemporary Christian music is. Which I feel like contemporary Christian music is constrained to be this, you know, the worship songs you hear every Sunday. Um, which is really unfortunate. That's the vast majority of what it is. Um, there are a lot of really good Christian artists that, you know, don't make that kind of stuff, but nobody ever hears about them because they're not the big, you know, Brandon Lake or, you know, Elevation or, or you know, Bethel, all the big names. Um, so I the way I pro approach producing music is not like being constrained to the contemporary Christian music side of things. I like to make music that's similar to what you would hear in secular songs, but clean in the aspect of it's not talking about, you know, all the things that you hear about in secular music. So, uh, for example, I've been producing with some, uh, for some artists at GCU and not all of it is essentially like, like Christian, like the, it's not like talking about God, but it's all clean and whatnot. And in the aspect of, it's not like talking about drugs or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, and they all have really good stories and whatnot. And everybody that I work with is actually Christian. But one of the things that I have kind of get a little bit frustrated by is the fact that people kind of feel like if you're a Christian, you have to write Christian music. Um, and I don't think that's true. Um, I do think that it's important to make your music clean and it still can glorify the Lord through music. But I think um, producing music, you can create whatever you want. You could talk about a girl that you love, like... I mean, it's been like that for years. Like you have people that are Christians and, you know, writing songs about, you know, the girl next door <laughs> sort of thing. So um, I love I love incorporating the stylings of secular music, but also keeping it clean and honoring to the Lord. Mm. Good, right? We're supposed to worship through every single aspect of what we do, right? Amen. And talking about that a little bit more. What's it like to, like you said, being working at GCU for a little bit, producing for them, what's it like to be a Christian in a, you know, I'm sure the music industry is a very secular world, right? Like, talk about what that's like. 
Yeah. Um, so luckily at GCU, there's a lot of, um, especially in the circle of friends that I run with, mo- the vast majority are Christian, um, or at least, you know, trying to be. Um, and yeah, there's a, there's a lot of secular aspects that kind of surround me and stuff like that. And it is tempting to kind of follow along those things, especially at a college. Um, the way that I've kind of combat combated that is to, um, involve myself with friends and whatnot that are, that are, you know, solid Christians. And I just, I honestly, I spend all my time at the studio, so I'm not really tempted to do much else. I think if anytime I'm not in class at GCU, if I'm up at GCU, I'm at the studio until like midnight. So a lot of late nights for me, but I really love like working with artists and creating songs from scratch, like taking their visions and bringing it to, you know, fruition, like their dream goal of the of the song. And I feel like the role of a producer is definitely sometimes underrated, right? Because yeah. uh, yes. like yes. <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> um, so <laughs> producers are 100% underrated in the fact that um, everybody looks at a song and is like, oh, this artist is amazing. Well, yes, the song was written. The producer, the one who produces it is what brings that vision and that those lyrics to life. Um, so every time that I hear like a really good song, yes, the artist is fantastic, but I always look at the producer who produced it. And then I follow them on Instagram because <laughs> I'm like, you're, you're talented. I'd love to you know see your work. So, um, I do wish producers would get a little bit more recognition for what they do, but it kind of is what it is. They're the behind the scenes person. Um, so I've been, I've become willing to accept that, um, as a producer that, uh, you know, you're going to be behind the scenes. You're not going to be in the front. And quite frankly, I don't think that I would like being in the front very much. Um, Even singing on stage makes me have a panic attack. (laughs) So, um, yeah, no, I'm I'm okay with being behind the scenes. So, speaking on that a little bit more, um, repeat it. Speaking on that a little bit more, talk about where you get your inspiration from too, because I'm sure you know you have you literally have the the pick of the litter when it comes to anything and everything you could write from. Like, you know, how do you kind of game plan and mentally get yourself in that mindset when you're producing? Yeah, so my main, well, I I guess my inspiration is music in general. I don't stay constrained to a genre. I listen to anything and everything from country to contemporary Christian music to EDM to rap to uh, R&B. Listen to a lot of R&B lately, actually. So um, I like just listening to everything and pulling bits and pieces from different genres that I truly love. Um, right now I've been really heavy into R and B cause I just love like the jazz feel that it has to it from my background in, in being classically trained. So I really love incorporating those chord stylings and whatnot. Everybody loves uh, to hear in jazz and, and R and B. Gotcha. Very cool. And talking maybe on that, you know, aspect of the inspiration and whatnot for someone who's, let's say, you know, 16, 15 year old kids, like, here's your song and here's something you produced. Oh my gosh, I want to do what he does. Where do they even start? Where do they even begin? Yeah, great question. Um, I guess the the best thing to do is to just, just get involved in it. There's no reason why you shouldn't try making music. Like you could be working a nine to five and, you know, when you get home, you spend an hour or two learning how to make music. I mean, that's how I started. I would think I was 13 when I started producing and I would literally take my parents computer and I would put it in a separate room and I would put my headphones on and just watch YouTube videos on how to use a a DAW and and just start learning. Uh, The hardest thing for me was, you know, finding time to do it with, you know, school and stuff, but there's no reason why you shouldn't uh, get into it. I mean, there's, you're not losing anything by trying to learn something new and it's a great way to get your, you know, your creative expression um, out and who knows what could come of it. Yeah. So. I mean, hit them up guys, you never know, right? You never know, it's all about you now, but you never yeah, know, right? Exactly, and it's networking. Networking is huge. Like, networking is probably single-handedly the biggest thing in this industry. Um, knowing the right people, obviously you need to have skill and you need to have talent, but that, come, that can come with time. Um, but if you know the right people, then, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna have some solid connections and you might have some great opportunities. And that's the other thing too, is when you're given opportunities, take them. 
like don't miss out on anything um any opportunity any chance that i have to do something i take it and even to the point where i have a hard time saying no to things like my schedule gets overloaded uh and i'll talk more about that in a second too um but any opportunities you have especially when you're first starting out like if you have the opportunity to watch someone during a studio session for example um at gcu i've had a couple of artists slash producers that have been like hey you're doing a lot of this work and stuff here can i come sit in on your session and that to me is like the best experience i love having someone that can you know sit right next to me or over my shoulder and watch what i'm doing and being able to help them like learn the different aspects of you know recording or mixing um and it's just so cool to see you know people have the same passion as me so i love to take anything that i have and and give that to them that's very cool. We'll talk about a little more, like I said, your schedule. I mean, what is a typical nine to five or even just like you said, you work midnight hours sometimes. Like what's the regular schedule look like for Ray? Oh, the, the Ray Ray schedule is not not exactly ideal, um, but man, God is good. He's given me a lot of energy when I feel like I should not have energy. Um, typically on a school day, um, I have a 7 a.m. class, so I'll wake up at 4.30 I'll, you know, shower, I'll maybe eat breakfast, <laughs> um, pack a lunch, and um, I'm off to class. And then I have class at 7 a.m., 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 1 p.m. I get out of class at 3. And then after that, I'm in the studio from 3 to midnight, just working on projects back to back. I have uh, pre-production meetings with artists, so people that I'm just starting to work out with on a song. For example, right now I have four artists I'm about to start with after the spring break. And um, what that looks like is right after class, I'm going to be having pre-production meetings. And what a pre-production meeting is, you have about an hour to two hours about talking through the song, the vision, the goals, where it's headed, the heart behind it. And all of these things are essential to, you know, getting the overall structure of a song um, start to finish. So I meet with these artists, I'm like, okay, I have you scheduled for three to four. Like, I feel like such a professional now where I'm like, I'm scheduling, okay, I have you three to four. Okay, my next meeting is four to five. This one is six to seven, because I gotta take a break to eat dinner. Um, and then seven to eight. And then usually around the eight o'clock mark, I'll book out one of the studios at GCU and I'm just in there mixing for four hours. So mixing is the, the most monotonous part of producing, but, um, very essential. Wow, that's that's a full day, literally full day. Yeah. I mean, I'm lucky to get to the bathroom that early at 4.30 in the morning, like, yeah. oh my gosh. Talk about, also too, I'm curious, the financial side of things, right? Because I met some people who are starting out like, hey, is there any money in this? Like, is this a career that I can support a family on? Like, talk about that aspect a little bit from what you've experienced. Yeah, yeah. Um, fun. <laughs> Oh, the financial part sucks, dude. There's all this, it's so expensive. Um, I really wish it wasn't um, for a lot of like your high end stuff that, you know, can really help you out. Um, for those that are starting out, I think the best thing for you would be to start small, start with a free version of a DAW, start with, um, you know, trial versions of things. I've even like cracked some versions of things just because like, I, I mean, you just don't have money. I started out when I was 13, I didn't even have a job. I had like 50 bucks in the bank, I think. So um, yeah, start small, start with free and work your way up. You don't need the biggest and greatest things when you start, but once you start getting better, you know, you start working more, um, use your nine to five job to help you, you know, pay for your things. Um, but the hardest thing is, the fact that you will not make any money as a producer right now i'm not making anything with what i do everything that i do everything i do is free um so right now i'm not making a cent off of what i do i'm so i'm negative in what i'm doing but what i count for in the loss of money i count for in gain and experience um, and experience is so valuable in this industry because learning all the details that you know take a producer to the next level um, start with, you know, your bank account dwindling and your experience slowly going up and the money will come with time. And I'm not concerned about the money right now. I'm concerned about, you know, 
being at a level of intelligence where I can work with, you know, the best of the best. Totally. And you have to also have a whole bunch of faith too. I mean, your faith I'm sure is growing. It's like, yes. Lord, I don't, I'm not making any money on this, but if this is the path you want me on, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's another challenging thing too, where I kind of feel like, okay, I'm doing, I'm doing all this work. Like, is it really worth it? And, um, God's been so faithful to open doors over and over again, where it's like, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Look, I'm showing you again. This is where you're supposed to be. Um, and that's something that I feel like if you see all these doors opening, it's like, okay, yeah, you're supposed to be here. Keep going in what you're doing. I know it sucks right now and the bank account shows that. <laughs> but, um, man, he's just faithful to, to, to keep me going and whatnot and keep giving me strength and courage to continue. Uh, when I get down, anytime I get down, he picks me right back up and is like, look at this, like, look at the people that you're impacting. Um, or, and even the people that I don't see that I'm impacting. Um, I don't know what the impact of the songs that I've produced is. Um, I've had some people say that they're amazing and that they've touched their, that's touched their hearts, but, uh, I don't truly know the impact of the songs that I'm having. So I'm faithful and, and trusting that the Lord is using everything that I, I do to, you know, reach people. Absolutely. Yes. And amen. Is there, kind of speaking on that, is there perhaps a moment or experience you remember that's very vivid and clear when someone reached out and said, Hey Ray, like full on testimony, life story, whatever that looks like. They're like, this song impacted me to like the depths of my soul. Um, yeah, that's a great question. I think the biggest one is a song that I recently produced, um, for an artist named Cody Ario. And the song is Let Go, and the chorus is a massive, uh, like, just very spacey um, vocal uh, layered, and it says, let go, my child. Um, and it's written from God's perspective of you have all of this weight on you and whatnot, and it's just like you need to give that to him. Like, everything that you're struggling with, all of your burdens, all of your anxiety, all of your, you know, depression, all of your all of your doubt, your fears, um, about life, it needs to all go and let him have it. Um, and I remember one student in particular coming up to me after that and he said, Hey, um, I heard you produce this song for Cody Ario. I'm good friends with him. He's like, I want you to, I wanted to let you know that this song has like impacted me in a, in a way that you don't understand. Like, he's like, I've been struggling with depression and, and, you know, like suicidal thoughts. And he said, this song, he's like, really helped me get out of that and, and cast all my fears and doubts um, onto the Lord. And I was like, wow, I didn't think that one song would affect people like that. Like, I'm just doing what I do, you know, helping who I can. But it's so encouraging to see things like that where it affects somebody's life in such a positive way that could even save them from themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so... I'm very thankful for the way that the Lord has used music and even my music to impact people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you all probably know the psychology and you're learning about it in school, just the power of music, the way it's intertwined in our lives, you know, ever since the beginning, right? Like David played the lyre and yep. it pleased the Lord. Like, oh my gosh, like the Lord was pleased by music, right? <laughs> yeah. No, it's good, man. Uh, music is, is powerful. Um, I can't say that anybody I know doesn't listen to music and if you don't listen to music I mean that's sad like I can't imagine not listening to music it's such an essential part of our lives whether it's secular or you know Christian or it's like worship um, music is like a way of connecting our feelings to a song so whether you're a Christian or whether you're not a Christian everybody's listening to music that expresses some part of who they are. So, you know, you could be hearing a Billie Eilish song and be like, oh yeah, I connect to that. Maybe not bad guy, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, you're connecting to that song in a way, or, you know, you could be hearing praise by uh, Brandon Lake and be like, yes, this is, you know, this is like my anthem right now, you know, praise the Lord for, for who he's been in my life in the, you know, past X amount of time. Um, so we're all we're all consuming this music and whatnot as an expression of something inside of us that's coming out. Absolutely, that's very cool. Final question, then we'll wrap it up. What is would you say from your experience the hardest part about being a Christian? The hardest part about being a Christian, um, 
realizing that people are not going to like you. Um, and that's something that I've struggled with. Um, so I have a, there's a lot of ways I can go with this, but, um, I struggle with being a people pleaser and for anybody that's a people pleaser, they know that it's, it's a hard to say no to people. And so being a Christian means that there are things that you have to say no to. Um, there are things that you cannot go along with, um, and you have to be okay with that. Um, so in high school, I struggled with that. Uh, even, even now still, I kind of struggle with that a little bit. Um, but the hardest part, yeah, about being a Christian is, you know, learning to say no to things because people aren't going to like you. Um, and man, it's, while it's hard, it's so, so fruitful to, you know, pick up the courage to say no to things. Um, just because of the reward of it is, you know, being faithful to the Lord. And that's all that he asked for us is, you know, to be faithful. Um, one of the areas that I practically struggle with that, especially at school, is like when I have all of these areas where people are like, hey, I want you to work on this song. And some of them have been fairly secular artists where I'm like, I don't know if I'd be okay working on this song knowing that the explicit material of it is not who I am. Um, so learning to say no to things is a struggle too, because I'm like, I want to help people. I don't want to, I hate saying no. I hate saying no. It is like, it is the worst feeling when I say, Hey, I can't help you with this right now. Like, I want to just, I want to be the person that helps everybody achieve their goals and their dreams. But there have been times where I'm learning that, okay, no is, no is a good word. It's not a bad word. You can, you can use it, um, and help yourself out a bit. Absolutely. I mean, I even think of like Jesus himself, right? He had boundaries. And of course, you know, there were times where he just like said, hey, the disciples were like, hey, let's go do this, let's do that, let's do some miracles. And he's like, no, I need to go spend time with the Lord. Like just go on a mountain and disconnect from everything. So, you know, easier said than done, right? Of like yeah. saying no to someone because you're like, oh, like what if they really need my help? Or if like, hey, maybe not now, but next time, you know, like kind of delaying it in a way. But I can get that. It's, it's hard because you're like, I want to help. <laughs> totally. I don't have any more questions. I think we're out of time. So, Ray, plug away. Tell me all about, are you on Spotify, SoundCloud, AOL, I am? Like, how can we get connected? Listen to your stuff. Yeah. Yours. It's funny because one of the one of my friends, uh, actually all of my friends in my group chat always say that I'm plugging myself. So this part is definitely, I'm going to get roasted in this group chat after this goes out. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, my music is on Spotify. You can find me at Electro, which is spelled E-L-E-C-T-R-O-H-H. -H. So two H's at the end is pretty much the only thing that makes it special, I guess. Um, so that's my Spotify. Uh, I haven't released music in a little bit, but during the summer, I'm definitely going to get back into that. Um, and then on Instagram, where I mainly post everything, it's just prod. So P-R-O-D dot electro with the two h's at the end and yeah that's where you'll find all my updates and whatnot i'm going to be doing a lot of content on there as well uh videos and whatnot since i just got a camera too who knows maybe i'll do a podcast and have you on it you never know man you never <laughs> know so i'm curious just follow up question super quick what's the nickname story just like electro where they come from well i was 13 years old and i was like oh yeah i want to be a dj so electro like lightning and like <laughs> I don't know. It was, I was 13, man. I kind of wish I didn't go for it right now. I think it would have been better to do something like Ray Ray. I think that'd be kind of cool. But with how far along I'm in with it, I kind of have to stick with it. So it is what it is. Ray, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, Guys, if you haven't already, be sure you check out his stuff. All good things. I'll have all that stuff in the description for this podcast episode. You can check him out, follow along, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Till next time. Yeah, sweet. See you guys later.